Hi everyone, Wally Nichols here with the Asset Guidance Group update for the week of April, week ending April the second. Actually, it ended on April Fool's Day, but we don't want to we don't want to do a video that says April Fools on it, right? So uh, ended uh, ended uh, uh, Q1 in March on Wednesday, and then wrapped up with a booming day on April first. So. Uh, 2021 so uh, this is where we're at now the reason I'm doing this video is because I got a lot of calls this week from uh, people, and this has been going on for a couple three weeks that just didn't get a chance to put this presentation together but uh, people selling fear and people selling funds now uh, to me third you know third party uh, money managers trying to get me to go in with their funds we we, we do our own thing uh, here uh, but uh, the point is, is that they're do they're saying this based upon the pitch that the 10-year rates continue to increase, scare, 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 fear, 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 market's going to crash, blah, blah, blah. Okay, and so if they're doing that with with me here, that means that a lot of uh, insurance salespeople are are reaching out to people like you, saying uh, fixed index annuity, market's going to crash, fixed index universal life, market's going to crash, blah, 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 fear, fear, fear is what we hear from this, okay? Everything's fine, and what I'm trying to show you here is the, uh, the data to support the proposition that we don't let the 10-year yield alone in a nice, we don't view that in an isolated setting. Really, the data doesn't support the notion that the 10-year is entirely correlated with equities or vice versa, I can say that. And, and we have to look at things in conjunction with one another. Life is never that simple. Certainly quantitative analysis is not that simple. We want to more closely focus on the correlation um, between these factors, 10-year yields, uh, money supply, and the velocity of money, which all create inflation, just the velocity and the money supply uh, looks towards inflation and then the 10-year we like to look uh, at our equity pricing model which really translates into what uh, equity risk premium so really what we need to be focusing on here is risk premium versus price earnings multiples and that's going to tell us more than just listening to these pundits and listening to the salespeople trying to instill fear into this. So let's start into this. Let's get into it and look at first whether inflation's really the monster and it's upon us like they're saying that it is, or and, and then let's look at the dragon of the 10-year and let's see if we can slay this monster by looking at where we are in terms of, of, of five-year historical price earnings and where we are uh, in relation to the equity risk premium. And I think you're going to follow me and say, hey, Everything's okay, and if you're not on board with Wally, come on, come on on board with me because uh, the water's fine. Come on in. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so then are equities truly overpriced? So this first slide here, I want to address the, uh, initially the the concept, the discussion that inflation is uh, about to be out of control and whether or not the evidence supports those fears and then the the general consensus has been that you're getting uh the 10-year yields is, is is what's driving everything and so uh, th those are the headlines let's look at, at the data here that's set forth okay so this is a four panel on the top panel is the supply of money all right now we can see since 2020 you had the uh, the Trump stimulus, and now you've had the the Biden stimulus that's going through. And so the, the money supply, on top of all this, you've got the Fed uh, buying and buying and injecting liquidity into the system. So the money supply is increasing, okay? But panel two is the velocity. Now we're talking about the inflation. Just because there's money out there, if it's not if it's not moving through the system. Then, then there's not the type of inflation that we have to worry about. So let's look at panel two, the velocity of the money supply. And as you can see, once we had the pandemic uh, hit and the economy shut down, the velocity of money fell to nothing, all right? And, and the latest data still shows us very nominal um, uh, levels of velocity of spending. Now, as 
as the 10 year continues to tick up, that's panel three, as it continues to rise, you're going to have, uh, uh, I could show you the 20 year on this, but it's hard to see um, uh, unless you've got it really blown up on a big screen. But uh, I can show you uh, the, over the 20 years, there's some correlation between the 10 year, uh, the velocity of money and the 10 year increasing. It, that seems natural, right? Uh, but uh, th that's where inflation is. And right now we're seeing not the increase that everyone is fearing. So the data don't as yet support that. Now we might have some adjustments in here in prognostication that could show down the line we have an increased inflation, but not yet, not yet. And, and again, the bottom panel is the equity risk premium. I put to you that really the equity risk premium is more correlated, um, well, can't see it on this one, so I'll hold, I'll hold off on that statement here, and let's look at the next slide. All right, now what I've got here is, is let's look at Megatech, all right? So basically that's your fangs, okay? That's your Megatech, uh, big, 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 Amazon, Apple, those guys, all right? So where are they in all this? Now let's look at your equity risk premium in the middle here uh, of that, and, and, and so, Probably there's some adjustment. There's probably some lag in this uh, to, to actually match it up. But I urge that there is more correlation between equity risk premium, obviously, and price earnings ratios, forward-looking price earnings, obviously. Why? Because that's part of the equation. So there's going to be um, um, a, a, a natural correlation because it's integrated into the equation. But my point is, is that the 10-year jump isn't necessarily immediately impacting price earnings valuations, all right? So the question in this whole program is, uh, you know, are, are price uh, earnings, you know, are, are prices in nosebleed territories? Are we up in the stratosphere? Not really, not really. Look at this for the megatechs, okay? The median has been uh, 38 over the past five years, 38, and right now we're sitting at a current of 39.89, so just slightly higher than median, oh, the five-year median, but the high is 50, so we're well below what they have been, even as, 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 as back in, uh, in, in, in last year, okay, which is probably right around September is where they, they peaked out at, but again, look at the, look at the 10-year relative to, to that, uh, those highs, and you don't necessarily see prices uh, directly correlated with the 10 years. Matter of fact, you're seeing, even though the 10-year continues to increase, you're seeing an uptick in, in big tech. So you, see, you there, there's, there's a bit of correlation, uh, uh, but, but not really, uh, not really that much with the, the, the 10 year. As a matter of fact, if you go back into 2018, you can see the 10 years much higher. Probably, I mean, currently we're at 174. Back then they were at 324 at the high, and you see, you see uh, price earnings there at 35 on, on big tech. Uh, and the equity risk premium elevated. So as the equity risk premium move on, like you get into 2020, it actually spiked and 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 the the price of uh, the forward price earnings for Megatech was increasing as well. So as it tailed off, uh, you saw a a bit of decrease in megatech price earnings but not so much as is what the, the headlines would have had you read into it so if they were directly correlated you would expect as as, as the risk premium to de to decrease you would have expected megatech to continue to move because that was 20 percent a full 20 to 25 percent of the overall market last year and and you don't see that in in this evidence here is my, is my point now let's look our model, we've got a model that we use here, and what we're doing is we're taking Megatech and then a component of a, a, a very carefully selected uh, uh, top-notch level of companies out of the S&P 500, molding them together uh, in our tilt model. 
And what we see on this is that that uh, because we're we're taking components of Nasdaq and S and P and blending them together, they're going to be a little bit higher than your average S and P 500. Of course, we're outperforming generally uh, the S and P, uh, but that's beside the point here. What you see is the earnings tilt coming down a little bit as uh, the bottom line here is is the 10 year. So you get the 10 year at 172 or so, and, and the S&P 500 right about its median. So, but the 10 year is below, 173 is below its median of 215 over the five year period. Um, meanwhile, you've got the S&P 500 currently just a little bit elevated uh, above its median, but not at its high, okay? And then the tilt is, is, is actually uh, coming down a bit in price earnings uh, ratio to, to catch up. But right now, even though the 10-year has been increasing, you see the S&P 500 relatively flat. Uh, and, and the tilt uh, is, is flattening, even though you still have this continued uh, increase in the 10. And if you go back into 2018 at the high, uh, which was vir virtually, uh, you know, uh, double, that was that was three years on the, on the 10 years, uh, not three years, but uh, three three 324 on the 10 year, then what you see on the S and P uh, was a 2383, and the the tilt would have been right around 30. So just a little bit more elevated now, and I think that that's more related to coming out of the end of the pandemic than it is to anything else. Now, so let's switch the talk then to value. Let's look at our value models. This is a double digit performer over the years. This is well below price earnings ratio, well below the S&P 500. And here we've got a, a median really for this year of 12, okay? So there's a lot of upside potential to that. If you think that, that we're getting a breakout and everybody's worried about we're at highs, Remember, high and low is always relative to a time frame. Okay, so it's hard to say high and up. You, you 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 don't really know when you're 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 buying in. You're always buying in at market wherever the market is. So it's a relative feature. Right now, relative to the S and P 500, the values then are lower. This particular model is much much lower, half. Okay of the price earnings multiples of the S&P 500. We expect as time goes by, there's plenty of upside potential here in this value uh, sector, which is often rebalanced. I mean, it's very frequently, there's a lot of turnover in this, but um, that has been a consistent winner uh, for us throughout the pandemic. And as we reopen into the full economy, we expect that to continue. So, all right, let's take that out of the equation. Let's put in just a, a growth composite of our growth stocks here. And here we're just slightly, um, slightly elevated above median, which is 2274. And, and, and the, uh, right now we're at, we're at 24. So, Right, that, that's arguably in the range. I mean, if you look at these ranges over time, the growth hasn't been and, and that impacted by the tenure. And this is this is um, uh, moving up. So again, I'm saying don't look at the tenure yield to be scared by uh, in, in terms of stock valuations because it's more driven by the risk premium. Look again at Megatech compared to that, 39, 89, these ranges here, it's a little easier to, to, to see these bars than it is the line charts, uh, in my view. We're still well below the high. The high is 42.44 over the, uh, uh, for, for, for um, this, this period, but the overall high for the five-year frame was 50, over 50. So there's a lot of, and that was last year, probably uh, that September thing, that peak right there. My point is this, relative to the five years from before we even knew what COVID-19 was, we're not really that far out of whack. And certainly 10-year yields were much higher back 2017, 2018 than they are now. So again, my point, 
is uh, reinforced. This is just a composite market overall. Uh, pretty much you're seeing growth track that, the same 22 multiple uh, there currently. Here I'm trying to put them all together on this uh, in one chart here with the, uh, 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 the equity risk premium at the bottom there at 3.04. And again, you can see that um, uh, we are, even though lately uh, spikes in the yield, this has not yet translated into risk premium. Eventually, and we don't have inflation, the velocity of money was not, if you remember that first slide, it's not there yet. So this has all been hyped up. And I'm, I'm like I said in the beginning, I'm getting these calls, you know, from fund managers. Hey, we've, we're, we're, you know, 10-year rates are increasing, blah, 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 fear, 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 uh, use our fund because we're, we're uh, going to be robust against the, the continuing rate increases and all this stuff. In isolation, it's not the 10-year, and, they, and, and they're oversimplifying this. This is a lot of fear. We don't sell um, uh, uh, anything based on fear. I mean, I don't manage money based on that, but based on the data. If you need a fixed index annuity, it's because it's the appropriate tool to accomplish whatever your strategic objective is uh, in terms of bond alternatives, as far as I'm concerned. And it's not because, oh my God, the, the, the stocks are high, the stocks are high, the market's going to crash. And that's what you're hearing when, you, when you're when you getting these phone calls, whether it's in the headlines, whether it's uh, if, if somebody calling you and, and pitching you, or if it's somebody, a, mon a fund manager calling me and pitching me, or I had a guy trying to get me to sell his brand of uh, fixed index annuities this week. And it's it's not that. Uh, uh, Fixed index universal life. It's because it's a tool that accomplishes a goal that you need in your plan. That's why we put it in there. Uh, otherwise, we're looking at at risk, and they're at risk money if it's managed properly. And I use a quantitative type approach to this, uh, obviously, <laughs> as you can see on the screen. So this is how this is how we trade. This is why. Our S&P 500 isn't the same as the next guys. It's why our models are, are, are better than the next guys. It's why um, our clients are outperforming the other people, uh, the other managers, uh, I, and I'm outperforming the other money managers out there in large part. Uh, past performance, no uh, uh, guarantee of future results. Got to throw that in there. But likewise, it's why my fixed index annuities and my fixed index universal life, when I decide that that's, a, that's a, a, a tool you need to utilize, is not the same as the next guy's. Because it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a strategic tool, not the be-all, end-all, overriding solution. So just this last uh, slide here, what I'm doing there is I'm squeezing in one more uh, element there, which is the 10-year. And you can see the 10-year continuing to increase, yet the risk premium is flat to decreasing. That will follow in time, but my point is we're not there yet. So stop buying into, if you, to the extent that anybody has, the fear that's being, that's being sold out there. Because most of these guys don't look at the data, they're just parroting the marketing uh, talking points that they've been told. And the headlines, uh, fear always sells headlines, you know, and that's what sells uh, papers. So here's where we're at right now. And Megatech is coming back. Are you afraid of, of, of Apple, of Amazon, these guys, Facebook? Are they breaking out? Are you afraid of that? And the NASDAQ's breaking out? Don't be. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, Q2 is going to be, according to history, very, very nice for us. And according to the data right now, you don't have to worry necessarily uh, until we see different evidence. Everything is okay. We got a, a chance at a, at, a, at a bull rally here. We are in a bull market still. And you can see growth here slightly outpacing the S&P 500 composite that I have in here. And again, you're seeing value. Now, value is falling off a little bit, but that's because of the, the rotation Kind of the last uh, couple, three weeks, you know, we, we've been doing this rotation in and out of uh, Megatech and in and out of, um, of uh, growth. But what we have right now is a, a bit of resurgence of this. And, and uh, as I said in the email uh, this week, you've got 
you've got uh, a, a, a catch up, a resurgence of growth and consumer discretionary uh, catching up with value. And so right now we're on the edge of a bull, uh, 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 of a bull run, okay, another one. And don't be afraid of it. We just work with this. We have a quantitative approach. I've got a quantitative uh, system here that will, uh, we'll, we're going we're gonna to be watching the, the downside moves. And when we get to actual nosebleed territories, uh, we're going, you know, we, we know how to, how to keep powder dry. We know how to raise cash. And so, um, you know, we, we, we do what we can to manage our, our clients. Our clients are happy. Uh, risk of principle is, uh, is, is always a reality, but the way that we manage risk is the difference. And that's what makes the difference. So if you've got any questions about this and what we can do, with your portfolio, contact me. Let's let's discuss it. Reasonable minds uh, uh, get together, and sometimes they differ, but there's a lot of common ground here. Let us reason together and see, you know, how we can in, uh, integrate further value into your portfolio and therefore your life uh, as as we go as we go forward here. Because this is probably a, a once in a lifetime opportunity that we're going to have to continue these double digit returns here uh, for a while while mitigating the downside risk. And we do that through quantita a quantitative analysis, quantitative approach uh, to uh, really keeping that risk. Our goal is to keep it within even half of a standard deviation while grabbing as much upside potential as, as we can. So we're not even looking at the standard downside deviation we're avoiding that and we're grabbing the upside. Okay, all right, I uh, didn't mean to run this long. It's a, it's a lot of heady information here, but um, if, if you don't get anything else out of, this slot, out of this presentation, know this, that it's not the 10 year in isolation that runs everything. We don't have inflation yet. And don't, don't grab the fears out of the headline. Don't let that control your life. Everything's okay. Everything is looking very, very good, and it's looking better than it has in, in well over a year. So uh, we've got full employment uh, is projected by the end of the year. That's generally historically going to pull a stock market back, but it's also a different topic for another, another video. So we'll save that to then. Anyway. Uh, get vaccinated. I mean, we, we've got the best chance in the whole world here in the United States, you know, to, 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 to not die of COVID, not even get seriously ill of COVID. Utilize it. The vaccines are great. They're safe. Do it. The markets are okay. The water's fine. Come on in. I'll see you next time.